The M4 Mac Mini is fire. Did I say that right? This is an M4 Mac Mini. This is the absolute bottomed out, cheapest base model Apple sells. We're talking 256 gig SSD, 16 gigs of RAM, 10 core CPU, where only four out of the 10 cores are performance cores. It's the cheapest one. It's this is the cheapest Mac. And today I'm gonna stack up adjustment layers, color corrections, LUTs, filters, effects, screen elements, plates, and titles until this thing gives up to prove what I think might be true for the first time, which is that this is the cheapest Mac computer you can buy. And if your videos look anything like mine, this computer can be a no compromise main video editing rig. I know this because I also own an M4 Max with quadruple the memory bandwidth, more than double the CPU performance cores, I, I think triple the GPU. A computer I also started on fire for a video I made on my other channel, and when I edit a regular YouTube video like this one, it honestly doesn't feel any different than editing on this Mac Mini. It's like towing a lawnmower trailer with a semi-truck when you've only got a couple of layers of adjustments and you're light on corny effects. Wait, you think this is corny? Yes. Yes I do. Yes it is. Go away. Example number one, my YouTube videos. This YouTube video right here, in fact. So this setup, I've got two cameras, a Sony a7 III and a Sony a7 IV over there on a slider, both in 4K, both shooting in 10-bit XAVC HS, which is H.265 compression. Typically, for my videos, similar to a huge majority of videos on YouTube, my timeline has this multicam clip of me saying stuff the whole way through, and then I'll pop up B-roll of whatever I'm talking about, or tracked titles or tracked PNG images, sometimes green screen and will even pop in to accentuate a point. That's enough green screen, Andy. Right now you're seeing this timeline playing in Final Cut Pro in real time on the M4 Mac Mini base model. I just screen recorded playing back this video after I've edited it. And this computer handles this type of editing flawlessly. No delays at all, no stuttering at all, no drop frames, all clips in full resolution in real time, no proxies, no optimized media, no pre-render. And this computer has no upgrades. It's the base, 16 gigs of RAM, 256 gig SSD. When I edit, I just edit off of one of these NVMe drives. This is a terabyte drive that's fast enough that you can just edit straight off the drive. That means that saying the base model M4 Mac Mini can be your main editing rig is true for MKBHD, it's true for Linus Tech Tips, for Peter McKinnon, Casey Neistat, Whistle and Diesel, it's true for Good Mythical Morning. A lot of the biggest channels, most of the biggest channels on YouTube have editing that is similar or less complex than what I do here. So let's see what it does take to justify spending more money on an M4 Pro or an M4 Max. I'm gonna set this thing up and I'll do it live so nobody thinks I'm faking it. I'm gonna go back and milk this clip of my coworker Camille some more, basically because she's in a big empty room and it's gonna be easy to cut her out and put her beside herself as one of the layers that we're gonna use. And again, this is XAVC HS footage, so H.265 footage, which challenges older PCs. It's shot in 4K, shot in 10-bit on a Sony a7 IV. We'll start with a color grade, and I'm not gonna spend a lot of time with each thing that we're doing here. The point is not to see how good I can make it look, the point is to see how many things you can pile on before it stops working all together. So, enhance light and color. Auto enhance. And this changes a bit of everything. Exposure, contrast, brightness, highlights, black points, shadows, saturation, highlights and warmths, tints, mid-tone warmths, all that stuff. So it's actively doing all of those things live on the footage. Nothing new, nothing crazy. Next up, let's throw a custom LUT on there. And I just went and downloaded the first thing that said free LUTs. And a lot of these do nothing to enhance the picture at all. But let's use Descendo STD. Cool name. Seems to brighten things up a bit. I'll keep it. So with those two things, still playing smooth as expected. Still scrubs just fine. Super responsive. No problems. When I look at this, I say this looks too clean. We shot this in an empty floor in a building in Midtown Manhattan. So naturally, let's put a little film grain on there. Just drag that right onto the clip. Uh, realistic grain. And there we go. Still sharp, but now it's a little messy. I love it. Camille needs to stand out though. So let's add a little glow. That's too much. Let's just make it enough that she's borderline overexposed. So now we've got color correction, a LUT, some grain, and a glow filter. Still playing smoothly, not dropping any frames, still scrubbing really responsively. Everything's fine. Everything's great. Let's step things up. What if we mask out Camille and put a second Camille standing beside herself? Gonna have to speed this part up because it takes a little bit of time. This will mean that the computer has to render a second 4K stream with a live rotoscoping mask. We'll duplicate this entire clip and slide her over. 
on this top clip, I'm gonna turn off all of these extra things. And then on the bottom clip, I'm gonna turn off that magnetic mask so the background comes back. And blammo, we got two Camille's and the Mac Mini is still making super easy work of this. Look at this, it's still scrubbing. What's next? Let's sandwich an animated text between them and then I'll live track it to her face just to make it harder. Okay, and I'll just make that the width of the clip and I'll move that to the middle. Now we've got an animated title that's tracked to her face, like her face movements. Animated text in between those layers, everything is still playing smoothly. This is still doing the full 24 frames per second. Scrubbing is still perfectly responsive. On re-rate, you can see here there is no background rendering happening. This just, this is just cruising along. Mac mini, base model Mac mini. And we are well past anything I ever generally ask my MacBook to do for the videos that I make, but let's keep going. Camille number two is gonna be a cartoon. Camille number two is now a cartoon, rendered live. I do also want to point out that this text, this Summer Vibes text, this isn't just some text. This text is made up of a whole bunch of its own layers. Just this title by itself to play live, there's 15 layers just on this text. But look at this scrubbing, it's still fine. It's still, nothing is taking any time. If I was chopping this up, and if I was moving things over, I'm stacking a third one on there. Totally responsive still. So, I don't know, random bokeh balls. There's random bokeh balls floating around the air. Still responsive, still scrubbing away. Let's track an arrow to Camille's hand. How about a fire plate in the background? We'll just drag this over. I had it prepared ahead of time. Ah, okay, it's starting to maybe be the slightest bit choppy. I do also need to point out, I think you can see from this angle, I'm screen recording onto a separate device so I'm asking this Mac to also go to two different monitors, which is no doubt using up some of its GPU. I feel like I need to reiterate that this is all rendering live. This is all happening live on this computer. This effect, the cartoon effect, the color correction, all the film grain isn't even real. The tracking of the arrow, the tracking of the title. Now there's fire with lots of see-through. The GPU pushing this to a second screen so I can record it. Anyway, here comes a bad TV filter to toss onto the back just to make things psycho. And this is the point where it starts to go kind of choppy. This is the point to where you notice that now the scrubbing, but like you can see that it's still like, now it's frame by frame, but this is the point where it starts to get choppy. There are eight layered effects, attract animated title, attract PNG arrow, three 4K video clips, two of which have active masks, active rotoscoping, and I do have a tool that will finally take it down. There's a title pack called M Retrovision that I've been using. These titles have a bonkers number of their own layers and effects and like particle effects and things like that. But if I go right over the top with this thing called a Retro Wave, this is gonna bring this timeline to its knees essentially. Because if we look at this thing in motion, look at all of these layers that make up that one effect. It is nutty. So when you're using crazy titles on top of lots of layers and multi streams of 4K video, you get playback that doesn't really work on the base model M4 Mac mini. So if your entire videos look like this mess, well then you've earned yourself a necessary upgrade to an M4 Pro or an M4 Max. But for the other 99% of YouTube videos I've ever watched in my entire life, holy crap, this base model M4 Mac mini can handle the editing. Okay, so last real world example. I don't have a podcast, so I made a fake one with my wife in my living room. And we're clearly giving very good advice as two middle-class white people in suburbia with no kids and a lot of life experience, meaning we're pretty old. But the more important point when it comes to the M4 Mac mini, get that in the frame here, is that we shot this with three 4K cameras, all in 10-bit color, all again in the XAVCHS H.265. The Mac Mini don't care at all. Mac Mini says, give me some overlays. There was a part of our podcast where Sarah was talking about these stuffed animals called jelly cats. We went to the FAO Schwartz, the big toy place in New York, where we yeah. went and they had the jelly cat deli and then all the jelly cats and we buy baby Harry the jelly cat. And, and how we need to go to Disney Springs tonight so she can buy one for her friend Caroline. So naturally, any good editor would toss up a little overlay of what a jelly cat is. But in a podcast setting, in a video podcast, that's pretty much the extent of extra layering that's gonna go on in the edit. Clips of things, PNGs of things, maybe a color correction and some titles. This means that you could be the editor of the Diary of a CEO podcast a YouTube channel with coming up on 9 million subscribers who has the biggest guests of all of entertainment and politics and science and you could do your job competently as their main editor for that channel with a base model M4 Mac Mini. 
16 gigabytes. So if you shoot a podcast, you can literally get by with this computer, the cheapest Apple computer they sell. If you shoot videos more like mine, which represent a majority of all of YouTube, one or two cameras, some text and media overlays, and not a whole lot of special effects, you can get away with the M4 Mac Mini to edit those. It's nuts. When you start getting into the massive productions, like, I don't know, a Mr. Beast style competition show, where you've got 10 or 15 camera angles that are all synced to their own audio, editing something like that, you're gonna need the beefed up M4 Max. Speaking of special effects, goodbye.